Hello, Algebra. We are continuing Lesson 4.3, Parallel and Perpendicular Lines. So here we are looking at um, perpendicular lines for the first time. So a perpendicular line uh, are two lines that are in the same plane that intersect to form a right angle and are perpendicular. All right, perpendicular. Great Scrabble word. Uh, Non-vertical lines are perpendicular if and only if their slopes are negative reciprocals. Okay, negative reciprocals. Well, what does that even mean, negative reciprocal? Let's say you have a slope that is one half. The negative reciprocal of that is going to be, uh, if this is positive, then it will be negative. And then the reciprocal is when we flip it, right? So it would be negative two because we took one half, we flipped it to get two over one. Um, another way of thinking about that would be if you have negative four-thirds for a slope, the negative reciprocal would be positive four-thirds, right? Negative three-fourths turns into positive four-thirds. So it goes from negative to positive, and it goes from three over four to four over three. So another way of saying it is it's an opposite flip, okay? Negative reciprocal. So try this one. Let's say we have um, one-third, What's the negative reciprocal of that? Negative reciprocal. Hopefully you got negative three over one or just negative three, right? What if we have negative two fifths? What's the negative reciprocal of that? Positive five halves. So hopefully you're starting to see a little bit of a pattern there. Okay, try a couple more. All right, so down here, now that we know about our negative reciprocals, um, I want you to highlight star circle, do something to make this stick out the page for yourself, okay? Vertical lines are always perpendicular to horizontal lines. Always, okay? Always, forever and ever. If it's a vertical, it's gonna be perpendicular to a horizontal, always, okay? So just something to note to know. So when we move down here, we want to write an equation of a line that is perpendicular. Uh, I'm going to skip that one for now, actually. Let's go down here. We want to determine if the lines are perpendicular. Okay, we want to determine if the lines are perpendicular. So for our first line here, we've got y equals 3 fourths x plus 1. Um, our slope is 3 fourths, right? We know how to pick that out. For our next one here, we actually need to get y by itself to know our slope. So we need to divide negative 3 on both sides. So we get y equals four, negative four thirds, excuse me, x. Uh, negative three divided by negative three is a one. He's a ninja. And then we can see our slope is a negative four thirds. And then lastly, we need to divide everything by four to get y by itself. So we get y equals negative three fourths x uh, plus nine fourths, plus nine fourths. Again, I would encourage you to leave that as a fraction. Nothing wrong with fractions. They're your friends and their food. Um, so when we look at this one, we have a slope of negative three-fourths. So we have our three slopes here, three-fourths, negative four-thirds, and negative three-fourths. We want the opposite reciprocal. So if we have three-fourths, that means that to negate it, we go from a positive to a negative, and then when we reciprocate, when we flip it, it turns into 4 over 3, right? We're flipping it. So that's our negative reciprocal. So which of these is the negative reciprocal for line A? Yeah, B, right? Line B is the negative reciprocal. So line A is perpendicular to line B. When you get into geometry, you'll see more things that look like this. That means perpendicular, all right? It's a symbol for it. Shorthand. Efficiency. What about line C? It's the negative. Yeah, but it's not the reciprocal. It's three-fourths, and this is a negative three-fourths. So he's not perpendicular. He's also not parallel to this guy, right? He'd have to have a, a slope of four over three, and he's not parallel. So he's neither. He's just hanging out with them, all right? Line C is neither. So now let's jump back up here, um, and I'll zoom in a little bit. And we're going to focus on this one right here. So we've been given the equation uh, of the line y equals 1 half x plus 3. Our slope, we know, is 1 half. That means the parallel slope would be 
one half. But we need the perpendicular slope. We need the perpendicular. So we need to negate that. Well, it's positive now. That means it turns into negative. And we need to reciprocate or flip. So that turns into 2 over 1. So that's really negative 2. Negative 2 is our perpendicular slope. All right, so I'm going to plug in over here negative 2. And then we have a point right here. That point is negative 3, which is our x, and 1, which is our y. So I'm going to plug those into our point slope form. So we have y minus 1 equals negative 2, x minus negative 3. And my marker is starting to die on me. I'm actually going to solve this for y. Okay, I'm going to turn it into the y equals equation because that's much easier to graph. So we have y minus 1 equals, I need to distribute my negative 2, so I get negative 2x. And this is really uh, plus 3. So that would turn it into minus 6. Then I need to add 1 on both sides. So we get y equals negative 2x minus 5. So that is the equation of our perpendicular line. So let's try it with this one now. All right, let's try it with this one. So our equation is y equals negative 3x minus 1. Our slope is going to be negative 3. That means the parallel line would have a slope of negative 3, but our perpendicular would have the negative reciprocal. Well, the negative of a negative is a positive. And then this is really 3 over 1. So to reciprocate it, it turns into 1 over 3. Remember, he's always there. You just don't always see him. He's a ninja, okay? Keep in mind your ninja number ones. So we have y minus, and I need um, this guy. So we have y minus... 5 is equal to 1 third x minus negative 3. I'm going to rewrite that so I get y minus 5 is equal to 1 third x plus 3 because minusing a negative is it's poor form. All right, just change that into a plus automatically. It's better for your brain. Um, ooh, this should be just minus. It looks like I said equals. My bad. And then to get y by itself, I need to solve. So I'm going to distribute that 1 third. So I get y minus 5 is equal to 1 third x. 1 third times 3 over 1, that'd be 3 times 3, which is, I'm sorry, 3 times 1, which is 3. And then 1 times 3, which is 3. So that's really y minus 5 is equal to 1 third x plus 1. I told you, he's around. He's always around. And then we add 5 on both sides. So we get y equals 1 third x plus 6. So that is the equation of our perpendicular line. All right, I'm going to turn the page. Um, here are a few more for you to try out. Uh, some of these require that you solve. So I just want to show you that you know how to do that. Okay, you know how to do that. Um, so we would need to subtract 5x on both sides, right? And then we would get negative 6y equals 5x, negative 5x plus 18. We would need to divide everything by negative 6. So we end up with y equals negative positive 5, 6x. And then 18 divided by negative 6 is a negative 3. So now that we know that, we know our parallel slope would be 5, 6. So our perpendicular slope is going to be negative 6 fifths. Um, you can use that along with your point, 10, 7, to find the perpendicular line. All right, down here, I'm going to zoom out a little bit. This uh, problem is actually a word problem. So you have a helicopter, um, and its position uh, and the search and rescue crew, crew is shown on the graph here at 14.4. The shortest flight path to the shoreline is one that's perpendicular to the shoreline. This is very handy if you're having to like, swim to shore or anything. We want to write an equation that represents this path. So we actually need to find the slope of the shoreline. So let's start by finding some pretty points. Okay, we need pretty points. Now, some of you might look at this and go, hey, that's pretty, or hey, that's pretty. No, they're really not pretty. They're really not. Because, yes, they touch your axes, but they're really hard to read. I'd have to estimate what that is. So it's not a pretty point. So we want ones that perfectly cross um, uh, the X and Ys, like this one right here. 
that one is a very pretty point. All right, that one is a very pretty point. Now, another one that's a decently pretty point is up here. Okay, so I'm going to pick those as my points. If you found this one, that's a good pretty point. If you found this one, that's a good pretty point too. But I'm just going to pick the two that I have put my little dots on. Um, and I want to find my slope. So each of these uh, marks on the graph is worth one. They're counting every two, but we can see that this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, right? So each box represents one going uh, on the x-axis and on the vertical as well. So one, two, three, four, five. So now I need to actually find my slope. Um, I am going to go down two, all right, down two, and then I need to go right, one, two, three. Well, down two is a negative two, right three is a positive three, so that means my shore slope is negative two-thirds. That means that uh, my parallel line would have a slope of negative two-thirds, but they didn't ask us for parallel. They asked us for the perpendicular, right? That's the shortest way is to be perpendicular, to fly perpendicularly. So the opposite of a negative is a positive, and then two-thirds flips to become three-halves. So that is our perpendicular slope that we want to use in our equation. They also gave us a point right here, and that point is 14, 4. So I'm just color coding like we do for our X and Y. And then I'm going to plug in what I know. So this turns into Y minus 4 equals 3 halves X minus 14. All right. Plugging in what I know. And now let's actually solve this. Let's actually solve this. So we have y minus 4 is equal, and I want to distribute that 3 halves. So 3 halves times x is 3 halves x, and then 3 halves times negative 14. Remember, this is negative 14 over 1, right? Negative 14 over 1. So this would really be 3 times 14 over 2 times... Well, 3 times 14 is going to be... Um, 42, and then 2 times 1 is 2. I can reduce that down, so we have y minus 4 is equal to 3 halves x. I can reduce that to 21. And then we would need to add 4 on both sides, so we get y equals 3 halves x minus 17. Minus 17. All right, um, email me if you have any questions. I skipped over a page in these notes that I want you to note uh, because it's really useful. It is this one, all right, it is this one. Um, what's great about it is uh, you should be able to determine which of these are parallel, perpendicular, or neither, and you actually color code them, all right? So if they're parallel, shade the square yellow. If it's perpendicular, shade it light blue, and if it's neither, just leave it uncolored. Um, so I highly encourage you to try this out, all right? Try it out and email me if you have questions.